So you're just starting out in voiceover and you're hearing all of these great things about your recording space and the microphone and the interface and all of this gear that you need to get. But which one do you start with? How do you know which microphone to choose? How do you choose and treat your space? Which one do you do first? Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. So you're just getting started out in voiceover and you're hearing all of this conflicting information about, you know, choose your microphone first or, you know, treat your recording space and you need this interface, you need these headphones. There's so much, it's very overwhelming. There's so much information out there, but it's sort of like a, a chicken in the egg. Which one do I do first? How do I know which microphone to choose and will it sound good in my chosen recording space? But even if I get the microphone first, how do I make sure that my recording space is going to benefit the microphone that I choose? <laughs> how do I know which microphone is going to be best for my voice if I don't have my recording space set up? Well, here's what I'm going to tell you. There are a lot of microphones out there, a lot of them at all different kinds of configurations and price points. It's, there's so many out there to choose from. Now I've got a, a couple of demonstrations or reviews here on my channel, um, a, you know, with different kinds of microphones. And then also if you, just a side note, if you would like to hear some other additional reviews about microphones, then check out Booth Junkie here on YouTube. Mike Delgadio has got tons of great videos where he does side-by-side -side comparisons so you can hear the difference between the microphones. So definitely check those out. But ultimately, what it comes down to is that whichever microphone you choose, your recording space is going to sound the same with whatever microphone you choose. Meaning, if you don't treat or properly treat your recording space, then a $50 microphone is going to sound probably not as bad as a $5,000 microphone, <laughs> right? Your space is going to sound so much worse on a $5,000 microphone than it would a $50 microphone because that $5,000 microphone is going to you know, enhance the sound and it's going to sound, your, the echo in your room is going to sound so much better <laughs> on a $5,000 microphone than it would a $50 microphone. So my point is, instead of choosing the microphone first, and if you have already, it's okay. But my advice to you is to focus more in the beginning, especially on choosing and treating your recording space. Preferably, you want a space that's going to be out of the way, that is not used by anyone else but you. It is dedicated to your voiceover business. And I say that because you want to treat it all around it with soft surfaces. You don't want the hard, smooth walls, floors, ceiling, door, desktop to reflect your voice making echo because echo we don't want echo in our voiceover recordings or audiobook recordings and once you have everything purchased and properly set up you don't want any of that to change slight changes in your recording space meaning microphone position just any kind of object in your room the walls that you treat anything that changes in your room is going to change your sound now, it's not that bad if you're just doing voiceover, but if you're recording audiobooks, that change, that change in sound might be noticeable to audio engineers or to the casual listener listening to your audiobook. So the space that you choose should be out of the way because you don't want anybody else in it but you and changing stuff up and twirling knobs, 
right? Once you have everything set the way you want it. And you want it to be dedicated to your voiceover business. So again, nothing changes in it. And you want to treat all of the surfaces around your recording space. I've seen these shields, the ISO shields that go around the microphone. I'm sorry to say they're not enough. They're not enough. If you think about your voice as a vibration, and as soon as you speak, that vibration, that frequency is going to bounce around all of the walls in your recording space. So those ISO shields are only blocking maybe from back here. But ultimately, if your, the, your voice goes this way and it bounces off that wall, that wall, and then that wall, and then into the microphone, your ISO shield can't block that. It only blocks a fraction of the recording space around the microphone. The microphone is not going to just specifically pick up your voice. It's going to pick up everything else in the room. Now, I know some microphones are a little bit better at targeting your voice, such as the shotgun microphone, which is laser focused on my mouth, but that doesn't stop any other ambient noise from bleeding into it. You could probably hear the, my computer about three feet away because my door is open. Maybe or maybe not. I don't know if you can hear it or not. But I would say focus more on your recording space, then choose your microphone. But before you choose your microphone, do some research. We'll go to Booth Junkie's channel, watch a bunch of reviews, listen to a bunch of reviews, and then make a decision based on what your voice sounds like. Is it a deeper register? Is it a higher register? Right? Do you have a super noisy room and you need a shotgun mic to help deflect or reject some of the other noise inside the room? There's a lot of things to consider, but I think first focusing on your recording space is going to help your microphone selection to be so much easier. So that's my two cents on it. I hope that helped. If you have any comments or additional tips, then please feel free to leave them down in the comments down below. It's only going to help anybody else watching this and looking for this information. We it, it takes a village, right? It takes a village to help everyone just getting started to achieve their goals and dreams in voiceover. So I'd appreciate that. And thanks for watching. I appreciate that too. Please consider liking and subscribing. That just helps my channel to grow. And um, I'll see you on the next one. Bye.